Hello, and welcome to a very special edition of Cosmo Dad, where we are going to fix a broken haircut. Some of you may recognize Deborah and her three layers, and now we're going to see what we can do to mellow this out a little bit. If this is your first visit to my channel, I'm Holland Morgan. I'm a cosmetology educator and hairstylist here in Austin, Texas and around Texas. And I really enjoy the hows and whys behind the beauty, especially hair. And I think that if you can understand the mechanics and the chemistry behind hair, then a lot of really difficult problems begin to seem easy. Just like, share, subscribe, that would really help me out and I appreciate it a lot. So we're gonna get Deborah up on a stand and we're gonna talk about the tools and techniques it takes to make her haircut a little more acceptable. <laughs> All right, so we've got Deborah here. Her hair has some issues. <laughs> So if we take it back to the fundamentals of haircutting, there are what we would refer to as weight lines in this haircut. Weight is where a bunch of hair gathers, specifically the ends of the hair. So what we have is a bunch of ends that are falling to the same place, a bunch of ends that are falling to the same place, and again, a bunch of ends that are falling to the same place. If you haven't seen the video where this haircut was created, it was an April Fool's joke. Um, Still gets a lot of views. People still don't understand it was a joke. <laughs> now, the first thing to note when you're dealing with a haircut like this is maybe this guest was going for something specific. And we're going to say in this case, she did not get what she wanted. The only issue is now that you have not gotten what you wanted, now we have to pivot and just try to try to make this better. So you may not at this time be able to get the thing you originally wanted but we may have to adapt just to make something better out of what we have i'm not saying your dreams are over but maybe we need to come up with some new dreams now once we establish that there's a couple ways that we can deal with blending out weight lines in a haircut unless we put in extensions can't make the hair any longer that is a solution extensions we could put in some extensions and give it some longer hair through here with hopes to blend from short to long kind of try to smooth this out but we're still going to need to blend this to make it lay smooth on top of the extensions in order to blend we have a couple options we have just standard hair cutting shears which we can use in two ways one is to incorporate layers when we say layers we're talking about elevating the hair up above 90 degrees from where it lives and cutting off that peak that we see there in some cases that is not a viable solution because that might leave you with really, really short hairs. If that's not a viable solution, we can choose to cut every other hair. So we can incorporate some slide cutting techniques or even some weaving with our shears or some thinning shears. Here I've got a 40 tooth shear. And if you see right there, it just has all these little teeth. Now these shears look really aggressive. I should probably do a video on them sometime. This is a 27 to oh, 25 tooth. And this is a seven tooth. This one looks really aggressive, like it's gonna do something scary. The thing to keep in mind about these type of shears is it's not necessarily about what they're cutting, but it's about what they're not cutting. Out of these three, this one is the most aggressive and this one is the least aggressive. Sounds weird, but I promise you it's true. If it were me, I would use this 25 tooth from Joel. I've had this one for over a decade. It's kind of my favorite thinning or texturizing shear I've used. And if I take this into the side right here, I can essentially cut every other hair or every other little section, leave some longer hair, and that's gonna allow that weight to kind of collapse. You could also use a razor for these techniques too. In this case, I'm gonna to choose to use shears. But bottom line, unless you're adding extensions, you're going to be removing length somehow. You're either gonna be removing every hair or every other small bundle of hair in order to collapse that weight and allow this to lay smoother for the sake of this video that's what we're going to say is wrong with the haircut is that it needs to lay smoother so now that we've established that yes we're going to cut we have to decide how much and where we could try to make this an entire shag and just do make it nice and soft from the bottom to the top and just collapse all the weight that we're seeing in here we could choose to leave a little bit of weight because sometimes we can do that to help kind of change the shape of someone's head. So we could leave a little bit of that weight up there, smooth this out a little bit and still have a different version of a shag. So that's two options. Third option, French girl, Bob, 
with hopefully some sort of disappearing layers throughout the top so this looks more sleek. Those first three options would be taking a terrible haircut into an okay haircut. If I wanna take a terrible haircut into an amazing haircut, then we have to get rid of all this mess. We could turn it into more of a Bixi or a Pixie and remove even more length there, turn this into our ideal length. And then in that case, fine, we could turn it into an amazing Pixie cut. We're gonna assume that this person is kind of attached to their length, is okay with a bob. Maybe they're more conservative. They're not looking for a super trendy cut, but they asked their stylist for three layers and the stylist was very literal and that's what they got. Judging by the amount of weight that's here, we're going to be cutting off this length and just adding some smoothness in through here and then trying to blend this length so we can see the maximum version of our two options, blending, removing. The only other thing I need to consider for this length is the fact that her length here is just about even with the hairline. And so that may cause some issues for some guests too. In this case, I think we're gonna be able to get away with it. So we're assuming that the hair is smoothed out fairly in its natural position. If this were on a guest, I would do some smaller sections for a little bit more control. But her hair is pretty thin. She said goodbye to her length, and this is going to need some cleaning up. That's already looking better. It's not perfect. And in fact, I need a little bit of a lift back there to make it look better. I would even like a little bit of contour right there. So when we're trying to create or remove weight in a haircut, it's all about where that hair falls naturally and where it gathers when it hits that point. And when we're thinking in terms of degrees, because this is how we understand the geometry of a head as hairstylists, zero degrees would be exactly where that hair falls and lays straight down. From the point where that hair grows, if I elevate, now I'm above zero degrees. And if I go straight out from where that hair is growing, that's gonna be what we call 90 degrees. If I cut that hair at 90 degrees, I grab this section and cut at 90 degrees or above, that means everything that was part of that section that's below where I cut will, will get longer and longer and my shortest hair will be here at the top. So if I'm going from long down here to shorter, the weight is gonna collapse and I'm gonna have something smoother and less bulky. If I wanna create a little bit of strategic bulk, then I need to cut below that 90 degree mark. And the further below that 90 degree mark I cut, the more weight that is going to gather in a smaller spot. So this is often referred to as graduation, whereas above 90 is referred to as layers. So if I wanna come through here, literally elevating this entire section just above zero. And if I come through here and cut that, then you can see that kind of shifts that weight line from way down here, pushes it up a little bit and adds that little bit of roundness. And that's exactly what I want. Ideally, you would stand directly behind your section Use the previously cut section as your guide, so you're kind of cutting in the same place. All right, so it's, it's not perfect. With a little bit more time, I might raise this up a little bit, but that is looking a lot better than it did from here down. Now we need to do something about this. So what I think I'm gonna do, so on this half, I'll remove length to try to remove weight. So remember, if this is essentially zero, right the, the highest part of my section, which is here, needs to be elevated to 90 degrees, straight up or more in order to release the weight and help it lay smoother. If I were to grab this hair and pull it out here, yes, I'm removing length, but I'm not removing enough length to make it lay smoother. 
I'll show you. So what if I just pulled this section here straight out and then just cut that off right there? When I drop it down, it's still bulky. I just moved the bulk. So what I've got to do is take my entire section, try to go 90 degrees from the tallest piece of that section to make sure that this hair here, which is coming from the weight line right there, that one gets to stay. So I'm going to go a little bit more than that. And we're literally just going to cut that off blunt like that. When I drop that down, you can't see it yet, but that section right there is laying a lot smoother. I've got to take care of all the rest of this stuff in order to show it to you. A really good strategy when you're trying to go through and remove bulk like this is also not to cut in a blunt line like I just did, but to come in and point cut. So now I've cut kind of a jaggedy line. No one's ever going to know. In fact, it's just going to lay smoother and blend even better. I am taking what are called radial partings. Where I'm basically going around the round of the head like slices of a pie. All right, now we should already be able to see that this is laying, this side is laying a bit smoother than that side. She still looks like a peanut. So we're going to have to take a look and see what's going on. Whenever I'm dealing with a weight line in the hair and I'm having trouble blending it, the best thing to do is to grab the weight line, pull it up out of the way. And I can see now that where it was, there is no weight. So now I'm holding the culprit and you can see that's all the stuff I previously cut. That's my longest length that sits right there. And there's still bulk in between. So I'm going to go through and do some more point cutting. Till it looks a little bit smoother. And when I lay it down, that's looking a lot smoother. Now I'm 90 degrees from that hair in the middle, not the hair on the top. So I'm continuing to grab the heaviest spots pulling all the hair into them until I don't see the weight anymore and cutting any peak that I see in between. When we come back and compare, with that little bang section, disregarding that bang section, now we're feeling a lot smoother. It's still not quite there and I've got a lot of bulk down here and I'm starting to lose a lot of my shape and bulk up there. And I can still kind of see that line at some point. There's only so much you can do, but the last thing I can do is actually borrow some of this hair down here, shorten it up and I can make a transition from all of this texture down here to this perimeter. Cause one of the things, and I don't know if it's showing up on camera is that now I have a ton of texture. There are hairs this short here, but it's still reflecting light different than here where I just have this solid gap of no layers at all. So it might help to remove that last little bit by incorporating a little bit of this hair that's really long down to there. So whenever I elevate a section like this, the higher I elevate above 90, which this is 90 for this section, the higher above that I elevate it, I can use less hair in the layers. So I'm going to go from my shortest hair here, to this length here and cut everything in between like that. And then when I let it down, now we're starting to see that final blend. She didn't want a French girl Bob with face framing layers. So just taking the hair vertically, everything beneath it, making sure that the weight line at the perimeter in this case is preserved.
Now remember, our goal wasn't to make a perfect haircut. It was to make an acceptable haircut. <laughs> I'm gonna cheat a little bit on this side and use my thinning shears right here where we can still see a little bit of that line. One snip is all you need. And we're finally erasing that line. These have a lot of names and depending on who you talk to, they'll classify them differently. Thinning shears, blending shears, texturizing shears. Uh, some people will insist that those three things describe different versions. The number of teeth in the shear determines whether it's a thinning shear, a blending shear, or a texturizing shear. Personally, I don't care what you call them. All right, now if we were to flat iron that hair, I have confidence that most of that line would pretty much disappear. And if we compare her left and right side, she's gone from three layers, which we had before, to this French girl slash soccer mom bob. It's better, it's not perfect, it may not be what she originally wanted, but it's often it's the best we can do in the circumstances. To reiterate, the only way to take a awful haircut to a somewhat decent haircut, if you're not adding extensions, we're gonna remove length or we're gonna remove weight, which is a fancy way of saying removing some of the length, uh, whatever makes you feel better. But I think that somebody who came in looking like Deborah when she did, might feel a whole lot better leaving looking like this, knowing that it's gonna grow out into something decent in between. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what else I can show you. It's been fun hanging out with you today and I'll see you next time.